Hello, everybody. Um, I've been asked to uh, give a quick talk on commissioning an annual QA with a 3D scanner. Um, like Candace said, I've been with uh, Centura for about a year and a half, almost two years. And in that time, uh, we've done three uh, linear accelerator commissionings, a Novalis TX, uh, Synergy S, a Varian TrueBeam, and we'll actually be starting another TrueBeam uh, Monday of next week. So we are actively using this system quite a bit. Uh, it seems like we don't ever put it away. We, as soon as we put it in the closet, we've got another job where we have to pull it out. So um, we've done quite a bit of extensive scanning with the system, so we'll give you uh, a little overview of the system, and then we'll get into some of the scanning and annual QA stuff that we're developing with the tank. Um, as a full disclosure, uh, we currently have no conflicts of interest. Uh, we currently are a reference site for a number of vendors, including Sun Nuclear. Um, we do a bunch of side projects for a number of those vendors. Um, I personally have been part of a number of other research agreements and non-disclosure agreements in the past, but uh, currently hold none of those with Centura. Uh, so um, that's just a quick view of what we currently, how we currently sit. Um, the, what I hope to cover in the talk is a quick overview of the 3D scanner system, give you an idea of what the components are, how they function, what they do overview of the 3D scanning software, and then um, commission on annual scanning. I apologize, there was a miscommunication on my part, so a lot of this was an overview of the system components, but what we'll do is we will go through the overview and then we'll jump right into the 3DS software so that you guys can see it. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to send a question there on your um, taskbar there. You can send them over and we'll try to make an attempt to answer any questions at the end. But we will go through, we'll jump right into the software that we have here. I've uh, uploaded a backed up database from our previous TrueBeam uh, commissioning, so we'll be able to see some of those scans and kind of go through um, what we would do to set up an annual scanning queue for a comparison against those annual uh, commissioning scans. So um, we'll go through a quick overview of the three scanning system. I'm just going to jump here to a previous talk that I've given for Sun. Uh, the 3D scanner uh, was purchased during a startup of a new hospital. Uh, we were looking at components that uh, we wanted to do kind of a single vendor approach uh, to standardization of physics at our institution. So we looked at a number of vendors. I've come from a background with IBA. I was with them for oh, basically a decade. Um, did a lot of research agreements for them and NDAs and was very familiar with them, but um, looking to just kind of standardize on a single vendor for all of our QA needs so that interoperability of the software and things of that nature would be a little bit easier for our physics team. So what we've done, we, we contacted Sun, we went through some of their webinars, went through some of their white papers, and ultimately decided to end on the 3D scanner. Just as an overview, the scanner, we had a few challenges that we wanted to meet with it. We wanted to kind of eliminate send some of that subjectivity that was a uh, it kind of inherent with setup from physicist to physicist, from day to day, from annual to annual, so that we can eliminate some of those comparison problems that we would have to do as far as tweaking data, centering data, doing various things as we would go about our annual QAs in comparison to when we scanned based on whether it was the same physicist, whether it was a different physicist, whether the scanning was done by a previous physics group, and how are we going to do that. And so limiting that subjectivity between scan to scan type of environments was really important to us. Eliminating inconsistent detector position um, with some of these newer machines like the TrueBeam, you no longer have doubly achromatic magnets, you don't have um, some of the niceties that you know some of those analog C3 machines have that we take advantage of. Uh, so uh, you have to look at things like the focal spot size going into the, the parallel plate magnets and whether or not those are being elongated. That's highly subjective based on the way you're scanning with the blue phantom the way we would always address it, we'd always have to rotate the collimator, then we would have to look at the, you know, is there a walkout in the collimator as it's rotated, and things of that nature. With the sun tank, that kind of eliminated it, because the detector position is always consistent. You're always scanning with the detector in the same orientation. So the things that you're looking at are essentially a, a apples to apples type of comparison, rather than kind of rigging your system to measure what you're looking for. And so um, we'll look at some of those focal spot scans as we go into the commissioning and things. But the, the Sun system overall, the design of the system from the ground up kind of fit our needs at the time. Um, it addressed the TG106 consistency issues, as I'm sure we're all familiar with. 
Um, the way it does it, eliminating the subjectivity of setup is done through the auto setup functionality. And I apologize, I'll jump through a couple of these slides. This is an introduction, so we want to get to the annual scanning portion of it. So I'll show you some scans in the setup here. But um, the auto setup is a set of motorized platforms. It's got two vertical motors, an X and a Y motor. Um, they quote 0.1 millimeter uh, and 0.1 degree accuracy on the control of those motors and the alignment to the beam. We'll look at some scans where we've tested that during our commissioning. Uh, it's controlled either from a pendant on the tank or from a set of software routines and the auto setup functionality of the software, which we'll also see uh, when we jump into the software here. Uh, it levels the tank, it detects the water surface, it aligns to the center of the collimator axis, it aligns the angular orientation to the field offset, and then it corrects for any hysteresis in the scanning direction of the, the diameter drive. Um, to kind of view that, one of our concerns was how consistent is auto setup and, you know, can they truly build a robot to replace a physicist? And so um, what I did to check kind of the auto setup consistency, the way we used to do it with the Blue Phantom is we would always do the setup and then we would scan a PDD for a 6E uh, electron beam in a 10 by 10 cone. It's fairly sensitive to the uh, surface detection. And so we wanted to see how well does this tank detect the water surface versus what we can do with our eye. Um, looking at it with our eye, we obviously saw variability from physicist to physicist, whether or not we were wearing our glasses, whether or not we were awake when we were doing it on a Saturday. And so we checked the auto setup by running five separate setups. Uh, we did it with two separate physicists at the time and actually a dosimetrist who had no scanning experience whatsoever. I just showed him how to run the software and said, have at it. And so you can see there's actually five curves there. Um, if you look at the front end of the curve, you can see a little bit of separation at the surface. Uh, but overall, that table summarizes the surface dose as measured by those five runs on five separate days with the same chambers, same auto setup. There was no manual adjustment of the setup at all. Uh, so you can see R90, R80, R50 there, Dmax essentially, and the surface dose readings in the table for a little bit more clarity so you don't kind of squint at that picture there. But as you can see, the, the, the auto setup, user to user, day to day, condition to condition is, is relatively impressive, in, at least in our opinion. Uh, when we're doing commissioning, we also like to look at the cross-line profiles, whether the inline and cross-line are matching up, whether or not, you know, when you center the tank, and for those of you center with the blue phantom or the PTW phantoms that I'm familiar with, you know, it, it's sensitive to how you're doing that. So we looked at the cross-line scan, same thing. We had the same, same physicist and dosimetrist running the 3D scanner with auto setup and then ran cross-line profiles. Again, those are the statistics there as far as the five separate runs under five separate setups during commissioning of the Novalis TX. Um, it's pretty much spot on. These are all unprocessed curves. So this is exactly what they saw the day they scanned. Um, it was a relatively consistent setup. One of the things we, we like to check as far as our consistency of setup and also is how well we accepted the machine is we do what we call uh, jaw face scans is what we call them. But it tests the angle offset how well did the uh, auto setup routine adjust the angular dependence to the skew of the jaws? So we went in and we actually scan, we bring the jaw all the way into central axis and then offset it. So you're basically scanning at the 50% line. You can see from the graph there on the left, we're basically right at the 50% line. Then we scan it 20 by 20, we scan right along that jaw face. So you're looking at the skew of your jaws and how well you did during acceptance and kind of beaten up on your service engineer or your installer to make those things nice and straight. Um, I have had very hard time getting this to look this well with any other tank. And that's because most of the time that is um, user dependent and that is a flaw, I guess, in, at least in this user, that getting the tank perfectly straight to the jaws, even with some of the, auto, the nice auto setup routines that um, IBA has where it scans the beam and looks at the skew of the gantry, it doesn't always accurately predict how straight your collimator is. And so um, we always, when we would scan these with our blue phantoms in the past, we would routinely see kind of like a wedging of the beam it would look like because you're scanning basically from outside the jaw and then as you go across the face of the jaw, if there's any skew, you end up underneath the jaw. And so you see this nice slope to the beam and that tells you whether or not you need to adjust your collimator or not. Um, whether it's, if, if it's consistent on both sides, I should say. If it's not consistent, then it's just the skew of one of the jaws. 
Uh, we also do this, I don't have a slide of this, of uh, the MLC leaves, so retract the jaws, bring the leaves in, do the same type of scan, and see if there's any skew in your leaf bank. Uh, very sensitive to skew to the MLC leaves. Um, you see very similar scans, but uh, if you have some skew to your leaf bank, you, you definitely can detect it right away during your commissioning. You can either have it adjusted, or if it's within spec and you can't convince them to adjust it, then you can uh, approach that however you feel you need to with that installer or service engineer. When we commission, we also looked at the functionality of the tank that they claim that you can scan a full diagonal profile. Uh, a lot of us scan half profiles in the IBAs for years and years and years and mirrored them because, you know, they're symmetric. Uh, so we wanted to test that functionality during the number of our commissionings. Uh, this slide is very reminiscent of what we see on our commissionings that there is some asymmetry uh, to those diagonal scans. Uh, one of the things that you can kind of throw out is when you are doing those diagonal scans that if you have checked the jaw face, if you're skewed, you know, these, these asymmetries can happen. But if you get nice scans like the previous slide where you have these nice flat profiles at the 50% line, you know your jaws aren't skewed, so you know you're scanning across a true diagonal. And so these asymmetries are asymmetries that you do see in your primary pollinators. And so when we do our commissioning, we wanted to test that again, we scanned a full profile. And then what we did is we took that same profile, copied it in the system, mirrored half the profile to see what we would have had versus what we actually scanned. And you can see some differences. The arrows show you some differences where if you would have done a symmetry a mirroring of the of the profile that you would have missed some of the finer detail in those profiles. The significance of that in your planning system is completely up to you. Um, I've been told that we are fairly anal when it comes to some things and that they probably don't make a whole lot of difference, but um, the fact that we can see this data is something that as physicists I, I feel we should at least be able to evaluate and be able to determine whether it's significant or not rather than just assuming a mirror profile is okay. And so we tested all these functionalities during our first commissioning and actually was very impressed with um, the ability for us to get the data in a very timely and quick fashion. Uh, we're all familiar with this. Um, this is TG-106. The, the orientation of the detector is very important to the penumbra width. This becomes extremely important because penumbra width is now a way to detect the focal spot asymmetry going into your non doubly achromatic magnets. Um, we test that on all of our installs, and without fail, it appears that every single commissioning we've done that has had three energies, so Synergy S with 6, 10, and 15, True Beam, same thing, um, that the focal spot going into the magnet, a good sensitive indicator is the 10 by 10 penumbra widths at a depth of 10, 100 SSD. We scan those things, lay the inline and the cross line over them. Uh, Varian actually provides specs now if you ask them what those penumbra width differences should be, and they should be right around a millimeter. Uh, every single scan, or every single machine we've done, we've had to adjust the 10x uh, due to the focal spot asymmetry going into those non doubly achromatic magnets resulting in elongated focal spots on the target. And so um, maybe that's just our anecdotal experience, but I would, I would recommend checking that. It's a nice, sensitive test. The Sun Tank makes that incredibly easy for us because now we know that it's not a, a, an effect of the chamber scanning across the beam in different orientations. It's truly a penumbra effect that we see scanning with the edge versus scanning with a chamber. We can detect it with a chamber or an edge because we're not relying on an extremely small detector. We're actually scanning across that direction and seeing the true penumbra width of that depth. So all of these commissioning things, we'll jump back to the other one. Those are all things that we look at during our commissioning that we really want to make sure before we scan a full set of data that this machine is performing the way we want to perform, uh, that we're going to be consistent with our data sets from machine to machine because we do cross comparisons between institutions and make sure that, you know, physicist A scan the same way physicist B did and follow those TG-106 principles. So those are the things that we see from an overview of the scanning system and how it affects how we look at commissioning here. We'll do a quick review of the software and then uh, we'll jump right into the software real fast here. The software is a modern interface and has the database driven. It has a lot of processing tools and I'll quickly go through here and we'll actually jump in the software here. Um, it does have a search based system because it is database driven so you can pull up uh, different scans of different types by the way you can dynamically search all of your projects. Um, 
you can set up the software through system preferences. It's an easy wizard-driven process, so you can set up your detectors, your systems, your institutions, your detectors, um, what holders, things you have. You have a nice little ribbon bar approach where you can just kind of walk through institutions, deliver, deliver systems, and detectors. Um, it has a layer on top of the database that allows you, for those of you who use like IBA and PTW used to file structure, um, makes the database essentially organized into projects and like a file tree that you would see on your system. Uh, it does eliminate the hassle of one physicist feeling one structure, file structure seems to make sense and another one doesn't. And so it allows you to have that database driven search for the scans you really need, but allow some flexibility to your physicists on how they organize their projects so you don't lose things. I know we had lots of problems with that in the past where we would have, you know, one physicist thinks a certain naming scheme makes sense while another physicist doesn't. It allows you to use that database to your advantage where if you can't find it via navigating the folder structure, you can just dynamically search for the types of scans you're looking for and locate them that way. It allows you to save to any type of treatment planning system. Um, Eclipse, Pinnacle, uh, we have Eclipse, Pinnacle, Array Station, um, various different things. They're all included just through the save functionality. You can also save all your auto setup scans and parameters. Uh, the system utilities allow you to back up the database, which is nice for data integrity. Um, the system you'll see here in just a second is the a backup of one of our commissioning projects, and we'll show how we will set up an annual based on that in real time. Um, the queue interface is similar for those of you who are familiar with like IBA's queue system. Uh, it's been a long time for me since I've used the PTW tank, but I believe they had a similar setup. You can set up queues. You see there on the left, there's a tree of various different types of queues that we scan with detector names and what they're set up for. Um, they have nice little, basically, VCR, even though that dates me, DVR, <laughs> uh, uh, TV type controls for doing uh, scan queue control. And you can auto set the scans to be dumped to a particular project if you're, you're organizing your scans in projects. Um, it has a quick graphing of the current scan being scanned and then the dynamic uh, field and reference readings for your detectors to see if your field and reference are appropriately placed in the field as you scan. And so the scan processing, again, they've got a full suite of scan processing tools. It's dynamic, so it, it, it goes according to whatever scan you have pulled up. It's the ones that are grayed out. You can see here I have a profile pulled up here. So I can normalize that profile, I can smooth it, interpolate, scale, center, but it doesn't make sense to do a PDI to PDD conversion for a profile, so therefore it's grayed out. Um, there's mirroring functionality, symmetry functionality, and then there's batch functioning. So the batch functioning allows you to set up that you always center your profiles, normalize them, interpolate them down to a millimeter. You can set that queue up, name it whatever you want, you can call it Eclipse profile processing, and then you can highlight all of your cross-line profiles, apply that batch, and it will go through and batch process all of those profiles for you. Um, it's a nice, quick, and easy way to batch process things as you're preparing them for your treatment planning system during commissioning. Um, I'll take questions towards the end, but let's jump out of here real quick, and I will kind of run you through the software real quick, and then we'll take some questions. So this is the Sun 3DS dosimetry software package. Um, what you can do is here's your project management. Uh, this is a res restoration of a database we used during our last true beam commissioning. So you see here we have our uh, commissioning scans. We have a focal spot test, our jaw face scans, our peephole and P-ion measurements that allowed us to check for our flattening filter free stability of our chamber uh, during the scanning of those beams. Uh, some projection tests where we test the 80 to 100 SFD projection of the tank. So you see here that we can have a simple project. Here's our raw scans with the various detectors. You can add comments to those projects. Um, you can also copy things from these projects. These are our process scans that actually went into Eclipse that are basically just essentially interpolated down to the right resolution. Uh, we typically don't smooth our scans or anything like that. Uh, we scan at a slower speed, but you can see that this structure here allows you to essentially pull up any type of scans based on their project, and so that project will um, kind of contain just the scans that you're interested in based on that labeling. So if we clicked in here, we would be able to see all of our 6x scans 
that we used for our Eclipse commissioning of the last true beam that we've done. Uh, we could come in here and look through our scans. We can sort them by type. We can sort them by energy. In this case, we've done the sorting by energy just simply using the project label. You can come in here and look at all of your scans, see how those, they compare to one another, see if they follow any trends. If you've used if you, if you scan with uh, chambers of different volumes, they end up you know, having gain issues down at depth, so you want to make sure that these are all tailing off the same way. So you can end up doing um, various things with your scans and views of your scans. You can process them. You can look at the layers for a particular scan. So in this case, um, if we wanted, say we wanted to play with these scans, we don't have to mess with the ones we've already done. You can just say add to project. And so I'm taking out of this project, and I'm going to put them in a demo project that we'll use to do some kind of processing on these scans and show you some of the features. You can say, OK. Um, you can copy to a project, or you can move to a project. Uh, we always copy because we've had some, a few little issues with the move where sometimes they don't quite make it to where we want them to go. But they move to the project, and now you can look in the demo project and your demo project now contains those scans. So in the case of doing an annual, if we wanted to scan all of our PDDs to verify our PDDs, we would pull it into an annual project. We would then pull our the scans that we were interested in, say we only want to do the large field PDDs. Uh, if we wanted to rescan these, we could then simply highlight these scans, right click, say add to queue, copy to queue. We look at our queue interface and, oh, I had something in my queue, I apologize you would see those scans are now sitting in here ready to scan. So you've taken your commissioning project, you've added the fields you want to compare to for your annual, you've added them into here. You can then say, I want to drop these scans as they're being scanned into some project, probably a similar project. So if I've copied them, instead of having demo, I put it called this annual, and I'll tell it I want to send the scans that I'm scanning today for my annual back to my annual or my demo project in this case, and as they're scanned, they will update in here. And when they update in here, you can come in here and look at your column chooser. You can pull in a date if you want. You can sort by your date. And you would see these were done on 510. The new ones would be done on today's date. And then you could compare 10, 10 by 10 to 10 by 10 for today, 40 by 40 for then compared to 40 by 40 for now. Um, if you don't have um, your project organized in a fashion that is easy for you, you can also simply go to this search. They have a dynamic searching functionality. You can come in here and say, I want an energy type of photons. I want a energy amount of, say, 6x. And you add it to here, so energy type photon. I want the type of scan measurement, of PDDs, depth scans, and edit, and then you can search. It will build a dynamic project that you see up here, uh, which are your search results, and these are all your 6MV PDDs in your database. And so if you want to further search it, you could say only ones in the Eclipse project, or only ones in the True Beam 1480 project, and so it'll go through the True Beam 1480 and look at all scans that are 6x PDDs and throw them in a, in a here. And then from here, you can then build your annual scan simply by using the same process. I want to look at my small field, so I'll look at my small field, add those to an annual project, copy them to the queue, scan them, have them sent right back to that project, and do your analysis right there. And so it makes this dynamic database functionality makes the ability to build your annual QA, especially if you're using your tanks. I know some people aren't using tanks. They're using maybe a 1DS or a profiler or an IC profiler or matrix devices if you're an IBA user. Um, it makes those comparisons really quick because now you have access to all of your profile scans or your, all of your commissioning scans that you've done. And if you've organized them in a way where you know these were put into my planning system, it now makes things like TG53 annuals very easily. So now not only are you comparing your data sets against your original scans, but you also can cross compare exports from your planning system directly to these scans. If you have, um, like I said, like a single vendor solution, which is why it was important to us, we can export these scans to our profiler 
take measurements of predicted plans from our planning system. And now not only have we done our annual, but we've also done scans that allow us to uh, compare a directly against our TG53 exported values from our planning system. So these projects allow us to do a lot more functionality that we didn't have. Um, I can't say we didn't have, but was much more clunky and cumbersome with our previous setups. Um, again, speaking just from my experience with the IBA tank, doing annuals was not always a very pretty thing. You did a lot of export to text files. Um, if you want to export to text files, we have some software that we've written that we like to use. And you can take those and you can come in here, you can pull up your scans and they have nice scan reports. You can print your data books. You want to include PDD tabular data. You can set up your resolution. You can then save this file to a desktop or to some drive. And it's, pardon me, it's just generating it here running over a long connection to another computer is probably not the best idea during a presentation, but that then allows you to review your uh, PDD tables. So if, you are, if you're doing RPC and they ask you for your PDD tables, we actually export all of ours directly out of the software straight to the RPC. And here's your tabular data that you can use for your data book. If you had more than one PDD selected, it would do all of the PDDs. But for the sake of brevity, we just did one. So that, that in a nutshell is a quick overview of how we scan, how the software works. Um, setting up the auto setup is all done through setup. Queues are all generated here. As you can see, each one of these is a, is a queue set. It tells you how many scan definitions are in each queue. You can take the scans, drag them simply over into here. These are scans that we use for our PDIP commissioning in Eclipse. Um, anything that you like or don't like, it's very familiar with uh, Windows. You can add, delete, stop, start, all using your context menus. And so the, the setup, the scan wizards, they're all very user-friendly and let you walk through your scan setups very easily. 